Hi, today I'm going to show you how to create a double opt-in registration system with DataBridge inside of Dreamweaver. A double opt-in registration system is when you have your users register on the website and then you send them an email with a special link in it that they click on to verify that that's actually their email address and that it's a real email address. And then once they've verified, then they can log into their account on your website. Before you get started with the steps in this video, you'll want to set up your site in Dreamweaver. Make sure you set up a PHP site. And then you'll also want to create a database if you haven't already yet. It doesn't need any tables in it. Security Assist features inside of DataBridge will go ahead and add the table for you, the user table. But you will want to at least have a database that you can connect to from Dreamweaver. So let's go ahead and get started. In Dreamweaver, I want you to click on Web Assist. Security Assist, this is a menu item that DataBridge installs for you, and click on Create Security Pages. We're going to go ahead and create all of our registration login pages right now. Next, we can select the preset that we want to use for our registration system. I'm going to go ahead and use the simple registration. I need to define my database connection. I'm setting this up on localhost, and this is the database that I created right before I started. So I'm going to go ahead and select the connection that I've now specified. And you can see it creates the users table for me. This will give us all the fields for our registration system to work correctly with the security assist features. Everything looks fine to me, so I'm going to go over and look at manage pages. Now here you can edit the fields for each page and make edits as you see fit so that you have the registration system that, that you want. Um, you don't have to use all the default fields, you can change things up a bit. But I'm going to go ahead and just stick with the defaults and click OK. Here you can see all my pages are getting created for me. After you've run the page creating wizard, then the access pages manager comes up and here you can specify access rules. Um, Security Assist automatically adds um, that you have to be logged in to access the user update page. That's all I need for now, so I'm going to go ahead and click OK. I can close this progress indicator. OK, now you can see that all my pages have been created. Uh, now I'll mention that they're not very pretty. I don't have them in a template. I don't have any CSS applied. So this video is really gonna cover functionality. Um, you're not gonna see a bunch of pretty pages. The reason that we leave off the, the pretty factor in this is that most people are adding this to their website. So they're already using um, a style sheet uh, or a template or something that indicates how they want their pages to be styled. So we don't want you to have to go in and remove all of our styling just to add your own. So it's not all that pretty, but I'm gonna show you how to make it work. The only page you're going to need to work with that it created here is the registration page. So I'm going to go ahead and close the other pages. Now there are two other pages that you are going to need to create. You're going to need to create one page that tells the user, thank you for registering, you need to go check your email and verify. And you need to create another page that the user actually verifies on. So I'm going to go ahead and create those pages. They can be very simple PHP pages that just have a little bit of text on them. So I added some text to this page that basically says, thanks for registering. Now you can verify your email address and go log in. This is the page they will land on after they fill out the registration form. So I will save this as register confirm. Okay, now I'm going to create the second page. This is the page they're going to land on that will verify them. We'll be adding functionality to this page that makes that happen. Going to put some text in here. I will save this as user confirm. Okay, the next thing I need to do is create an email that goes to the person that registered that provides them the special link to verify. So let's go back to the registration page. Okay, so here's my registration page that Security Assist built. I haven't done anything else to it. We're going to go ahead and uh, have it send an email to our users. 
So let's click on Web Assist, create email message. You can keep your trigger as any form post. The page that we want the user to go to after this form is register confirm.php. That's the page we created that we added a little text to that said thanks for registering. Go confirm your email address. And you can make this come from whoever you want. And it's going to go to the user. Where you select the data bindings, there'll be the name of your form here. And you're going to want to select their email from that. OK. Subject, please verify your email. You can make this anything you want. And with the email features in DataBridge, you can do a whole lot of customizing uh, with your email. But we're going to just go with the default to keep things basic um, so we can stick to the point of this video here. So I will go ahead and click Finish. So all the code that I need um, on my registration page has been added by the wizard. And then it also created a page that's basically the format of the email going to your user. We're going to come back to this page later. First, we need to go add two more fields in the database. I'm using PHP My Admin. I'm going to go into my users table that Security Assist and DataBridge um, created for me. And I'm going to insert two fields to the structure of my table. The first one we'll call random string. This is a field that is going to store um, well, a random string so that we can put that in the URL going to the user um, to give them a unique URL they can go to. And it needs to be text. That's all we need to do. The second field we'll add is email verified. And this is going to store a zero if the user has not um, verified their email. And it's going to store a one if they have. So we're going to make that an integer. And for the default value, we're going to put that zero. We want it zero by default until they have verified. So we'll save that. OK, so coming back to Dreamweaver, let's go back to our registration page. And on this page, we need to create a random string that is going to be stored in that database field we just created. This will be part of the URL in the verification email. OK, so open your bindings panel if you haven't already. Um, you can do that under Window Bindings in Dreamweaver. Come over to uh, this panel here. And we're going to click the plus button. And we're going to go to Web Assist. Security Assist, Random Password. Then toggle over to the Server Behaviors panel. Click the plus button and go to Web Assist, Cookies, Set Session Value. We're going to choose Before Page Load for the trigger. For the name, I'm going to call it RPW Random Password. And for the value, we're going to scroll down until we see Security Assist and Random Password. We're going to select that. Now you can be um, specific here about what you want created. And OK. Now we're going to edit the insert record behavior so that we can take this new random string session variable we created and insert it into the database when somebody registers. So we're on the registration page. We go to the server behaviors panel. There's an insert record server behavior right there. You want to double click that. And we'll go over to the bindings tab. We're going to click on random string and click the lightning bolt next to value. And we're going to select that session variable that we created, RPW. Click OK and then go back to the general tab and we're going to clear out uh, this go to after insert so that the universal email trigger will fire. Go ahead and click OK. 
now that insert record is uh, putting the random password session variable in your database. Next, let's go over to the email that we had set aside and we're going to add the link for the user to, to verify. I'm going to just change the notes section because I don't need it. You can edit this, to, this email to your liking, but I'm just going to show you how to put in the verify link. Okay, so the link needs to pass in the random string that was generated. It needs to pass in their user ID. And then for the sake of security, we recommend passing in their email too, so that somebody couldn't set up something where it starts you know, generating random strings and finally verifies an email address. Um, so to pass in the email, we'll need to add one binding to the page. Just add the form. So click on the bindings panel, click plus form data, and then browse to your registration form. And you can see that got added. Now we'll be able to drag a binding over that we're going to need. So the link should begin with the, the page that the user is going to verify on. Um, I'm going to type in localhost because I'm just doing this demo locally, but you'll want this to be your live website. Okay, so that's the link to the page. Then we're gonna add question mark ID equals, and we're going to drag over this um, session variable here. This should be the session variable security assist created um, that stores the user ID in the session. If you didn't have security assist create your database for you and you used your own user table, then when you're looking over here, it should say security assist underscore and the column name of the unique ID in your, in your user table. So I'll drag that over. And then we're going to append to that and random string equals, and we're going to drag over the RPW session variable we created. And then for good measure, we'll add the email. And email equals expand the form, and we're going to select the email that got submitted in the form. That all looks correct. Now, you probably want this to be a link the user can actually click on, which means we'll need to uh, wrap it with an A tag. So I'm going to do that over in code view. I find that a little bit easier. So before the HTTP, just type an A tag in with href. So A href equals quotes end, and then put your ending A tag in so you don't forget. Okay, now copy that entire URL there and paste it between the quotes of the href. And wherever there was an and ampersand, the HTML used would have been uh, and amp semicolon. Make sure you delete the amp semicolon so that there's just a regular ampersand in there. That all looks correct. And over here now, if we want to make it look a little prettier, just type verify here, or you can type whatever text you want. And now it's a live link for your users to click on. And I should mention that everything we added to the query string, such as ID, random string, and email, are all things we're going to use in a record set later with um, those terms in the variables. So you'll want to make sure that you name them the same thing I do so that you can carry out this whole tutorial without falling down. If you rename those, you'll have to be really careful to rename them throughout the app. So next we need to add functionality to the verification page so that it can recognize what these uh, links are passing in. So go to userconfirm.php in the bindings panel click on plus record set. We'll name our record set RS Verify. Our connection is correct. The users table is selected and we'll leave all of the columns selected. We're gonna filter on user ID. Now we're gonna to toggle over to advanced 
and you can see it added where user ID equals call name. We're going to edit that variable call name where it has dollar sign underscore get and then in brackets and single quotes user ID, we're going to change user ID to ID. And then we need to add to the where clause. So expand tables, expand users, go down to random string and click where to add that. And then we'll add equals param random string. And we need a variable to match that, param random string. This is going to be text, default value is negative one. And in the runtime value, we're going to type dollar sign, underscore, get. And in brackets and single quotes, we're going to add random string. Click OK. Okay, and we need to add one more. Expand the tables, users, select user email, click where, that adds it to the where clause. And now we'll do a new variable called param email. Let's add that variable param email, negative one, and for the runtime value, dollar sign underscore get, and in brackets and single co quotes, we'll use email. Oh, and actually go back up, the type should be text. Now remember, we used these names here in the email in the link that we're sending out. So again, you'll want to make sure these things match throughout the app if you're not using the exact same names that I am. Go ahead and click OK. And then there's one more uh, part that we're going to add manually and users dot random string string with a capital S. Uh, does not equal zero. So that's less than sign, greater than sign, and then zero in single quotes. Okay, you can click OK now. Now that we've created the record set, we need to create two URL variable bindings so that we can pick up on this page the variables being sent by the email. Remember we sent in the email and the ID. Uh, this page needs to recognize those. So in the bindings panel, click plus. URL variable and add ID. You can see that these match uh, what we put in the record set as well. Click OK. And we'll add one more. This one's going to be email. Click OK. So now we need to add a server behavior this, to this page that updates the record in the database. We want to say this person has come to this page, they've verified. Now I want to mark them verified in the database so that they're able to access restricted areas. So to do that, we go over to the server behaviors panel. We click the plus button, go to web assist, data assist, update, update single record. Click on the lightning bolt. We're going to select ID under URL. Okay, we've already, it's already recognized our database connection. We want to select the users table. And for the value, click the lightning bolt. Expand record set. And select user ID. Then select the bindings tab. Scroll down to the email verified column and we're going to make that value one. So remember when we set the default value in the database to zero, but we wanted to change it to one whenever someone verifies, this is what will handle that. Go ahead and click OK. Now we're going to need to add one more update record server behavior. If the end user were to change their email address on their profile page, 
and we would want them to verify that email address again, um, we would be sending them back here, but we would want the first verification link to expire. So we're going to add a server behavior to help that situation. Click the plus button in the server behavior panel. Again, go to Web Assist, Data Assist, Update, Update Single Record. Any form post is fine. We're going to pick our users table. This time select user email. And now we want the value to be the email URL variable. Click OK. Go over to the bindings tab. Go to random string and for the value type in zero and click OK. Now we need to tell the page what text to show depending on what situation. So for this thank you for ver verifying your email address, you may now log in. And actually log in probably doesn't make sense. It's access restricted content. And obviously you can change that to whatever you're allowing them to access. Um, okay, so we're gonna select that and we're going to add a show if statement. Click plus, show region, show if record set is not empty and that's the correct record set, we'll click OK. Now we're going to add some more text to support the situation where they might need a new verification link. Let's say your verification link has expired. Visit the profile page to send a new link. You can make that sound a little more elegant. Um, and we'll be editing the profile page to support this. But for now, go ahead and select that. And we're going to add another show if statement. In the server behavior panel, select plus, show region, show if record set is empty, and click OK. And then there's one other thing you could do, just add a link to the profile page to make it easy on your user, userupdate.php. There you go. The last thing you'll want to do on the user confirm page is store a session variable so that you can tell the session that the user has verified now and they could access that restricted content. Otherwise, it holds the old session variable that they're not verified. Um, in the session, which prevents the user from reaching that content without logging in again. So let's go ahead and do that. In the server behaviors panel, click the plus button, and we're going to go to Web Assist, Cookies, Set Session Value. In the trigger list, we're going to pull down the record set, RS Verify is not empty, and it pulled up the server variable email verified for me. That is the one you want to select if it's not already there. And for the value, we're going to click one and click okay. So now let's head over to the login page. We're going to update the authenticate user server behavior so we can store in the session whether the user has verified. There are two of them. One is for logging in with the form and one is for auto login with the cookies. We'll need to edit both. So open the first one head over to the session values tab, click the plus button, click email verified. Dreamweaver is a little picky about when we use these kind of pop-ups and it doesn't always um, handle the selection well. Um, so you may have to click it a couple times to, to get it to stick. We've got that added, go ahead and click OK and then repeat it for the second security assist authenticate user behavior. Save this page and in fact save all your open pages if you haven't yet. So now let's go to the access rules manager. We're going to add a rule. Go to web assist, security assist, manage site access, access rules manager. You saw this interface when we first ran the wizard. We're going to go ahead and add an access rule. Click the plus button and let's name it verified user. We're going to add a condition and actually the first one will change to restrict. For the value, select user, this, the user ID 
And again, this is the name of my session variable um, because user ID is the name in the column of my database. Go ahead, click OK. And we want that to equal nothing, so that's fine. We're going to add one more condition. This one's going to be allow, and this time we're going to select email verified, and we're going to make it equal one. Make sure you click off and actually see it update in the UI. It's another thing that's a little funny with the Dreamweaver interfaces is sometimes you have to click somewhere else to make that selection stick. So make sure um, your conditions look like this right here. The reason we need uh, both of these conditions is the first thing we're going to do is check and see if the user ID is stored in the session, which would tell you whether somebody was logged in. And then if they're not logged in, we would restrict access. But if they are logged in, the next thing we're going to do is check and see if their email has been verified. So let's head over to the user update page next. At the top of the page, we're going to add some conditional text that says, if the user hasn't verified, let's offer them a new verification link. Okay, and I'll help you add the link in a minute, but for now we're going to select that. And we're going to go over to our server behavior panel, click the plus button, and click Web Assist, Security Assist, Show Region. And then we're going to select not, our not verified user. And click OK. Now let's add a link that will generate an email to go to the user. You can select whatever you want in the text. And we're going to come down to the Properties Inspector. And we're going to add a link to the page we are on, userupdate.php. And then we're going to send um, a URL parameter. So write question mark send equals true. And then we need to Go over to the bindings panel and add that URL variable, send. So click plus URL variable, type send, and click OK. OK, now we're going to create the email that gets triggered by that URL variable. So go ahead and click on Web Assist, create email message, and for the trigger, click the lightning bolt and click on send right here. If you want them to go to another page um, after they click that, that, this is where you can specify this. Um, from, again, you can write anything you want, where you want them to see the email is coming from, and then click to, and we're going to send it to the email we have on file for them in the database. And for the subject, you can write what you want. And let's go ahead and click Finish. And the new email uh, template comes up. We can do the same thing um, we did in the last email. So let's go over to our first email. And let's select this whole row copy it, go over to our new email, select the row, and I come into code view and I paste it. Then after it's pasted, you'll need to replace the email with the email that's actually stored in the database um, as this, this original one was coming from the registration form. So let's go ahead and paste in the right code. I'll go ahead and give you that little snippet in uh, the video description as well. And there's one other thing you'll need to do since this is an external file, somebody's clicking on this in their email, you need to store a global variable at the top of the page. So we'll scroll up to the top of the page. And this is the line that you will need to add after the opening PHP tag. Okay, so we come back to the user update page and then we're going to go over to the server behaviors panel and we need to update the update record server behavior on the page. So double click that. Go to the bindings tab, 
Scroll down to Email Verified. And we need a true false value to go into this field. It's really a custom code snippet. So I'm going to paste it into the video description so that you can um, copy and paste it from there. So what this piece of code does is if you update your email address or if the user updates their email address on this page, then you want to mark it unverified again because you don't want them to be able to come in here and just change their email address to whatever you want that hasn't been verified. Okay, so go ahead and click OK. Okay, now we need to set um, a new session value. So in the server behaviors panel, click plus web assist cookies set session value. And we're going to set this to the same trigger as uh, we did in the email. And the name we want to, um, here we're basically uh, clearing out uh, the random password so that we can put a new, a, a new random um, string in there that gets sent to them. So select RPW and for the value, go down to security assist and select that random password. Click OK and OK and OK. Now we want to insert uh, the new string into the database. So we need um, an update record. So click plus, Web Assist, Data Assist, Update, Update Single Record. And we're going to pick the same trigger, the send, and the users table. And then we go over to the bindings, go down to random string, and we're going to set that to our session variable. And click OK. Go ahead and save the page. The last thing you'll want to do is lock down the parts of your site that you don't want people that are not verified users to access. If you're just setting up the double opt-in system to have legitimate emails to market to and you're not locking down uh, the site differently for logged in users versus verified users, you don't necessarily need to do this. But if you do want to lock some part of your site down for uh, just verified users, then you'll go to Web Assist. Security Assist, Manage Site Access, Access Pages Manager, and then you can select the pages that you would like to lock down, and then you'll say Grant Access if Verified User, and if access is denied, we're going to send them back to the user update.php page where they can request a new link to uh, become a verified user. Go ahead and click OK. And then we'll go ahead and test out our app. So if um, you're doing this on a remote server, you'll want to push all your files up and go to that URL. For me, I'm just going to go to where I have this hosted on localhost. So I've pulled up the registration form in the browser. I'm going to go ahead and register my user. Okay, and I land on my register confirm page, which tells me to go check my email. So let's go look in the database before I go check my email. Go to my users table, browse, and you can see this user was created. Here's the email address I registered with. And if I scroll over, you can see the random string was created. This is what will be in the email that gets sent to them. And you can see email verified is still zero because they have not verified yet. So before I verify, um, why don't I show you the restricted page to make sure um, we don't have access to that before I'm a verified user. And you can see when I try to access that page directly, it reroutes me to the login page. I will even log in as that user.
and it confirms I've been logged in. Now on the login page, you can redirect them to some, somewhere instead of giving them this message if you like. I'm going to type in the restricted page again and see if I can get to it. And what it does, now that I'm logged in, it tells me your email hasn't ver been verified. Please click here and we'll email you a, a new link. And again, if they, they lost their email or something like that, this is a page they can come to to resend that link. Um, we don't really need to click on that right now. What I'm going to do uh, next is verify by checking my email with the original link and uh, clicking on that. Um, or alternatively, you could click here, send yourself a new one, and click on the new link. So I click on the link that I sent myself in the email, and it tells me, thank you for verifying. You may now access restricted content, which I've linked to my restricted page now. And now you can see that I am able to access the restricted page. That completes the steps for building your double opt-in registration system. If you made it all the way through this video, congratulations. I know it's a lot of steps. Something I want to point out is this is not what these UIs were necessarily designed to do out of the gate, but it just shows you how much power these extensions have. If there's something you want to do, it's a matter of putting all the steps together, which of course is the hard part, but that's why we've, we're coming out with tutorials like this to help you through the steps. Um, but it does show you how much power you can have using just the user interfaces and um, very little custom code. So. Congratulations again if you made it this far, and if you need any help with this or if you'd like to get more information, please do visit us at www.webassist.com.